I will be looking at a game called Exhumed. Is it a forgotten classic? Mm, yeah, yeah, I think it is. Oh, that's going to be a short video then. Guess I'll see you later. No, I'm just kidding. It is a good game, but you need to sit there for at least 10 minutes and let me explain to you why. There is a bit of a weird history of this one, so make sure you're sitting comfortably. Exhumed is a first-person shooter released on the PlayStation, Sega Saturn and PC way back in 1996. There are actually two wildly different versions of this game available. The PC version that uses the build engine, famous for being used for many classic first-person shooter titles such as Doom, Blood and everyone's favourite chauvinist, Duke Nukem. It has a standard linear structure which sees you hunting for keys to reach the end of the level. As well as a different graphics engine, the levels are designed completely differently to the console version, with contrasting layouts and themes, a different user interface, as well as some different weapons and game mechanics, such as the ability to turn into a mummy in certain circumstances. The console version differs as it uses the Slave Driver engine, which is a nice theme name there. This allows for far more complicated fully 3D environments and other features such as the ability to add rooms on top of rooms, have sloping surfaces and dynamic lighting. In my humble opinion this makes the console version far superior in terms of graphics as the bespoke slave driver engine easily overpowers the aging in 1996 2.5D build engine. Also, just to make things more confusing, this game has three official titles. The European version is called Exhumed, which is the version we're reviewing. There is an American version called Power Slave, and lastly, a Japanese version called 1999 Return of the Gods, or at least that's what I can make out from Google Translate. No idea why they've done this at all. Right, have you got all that? Now that we've got through all the nerdy stuff, is this game any good? Well, yeah, yeah it is. Were you not listening earlier? So, starting with the story, which is a pretty threadbare excuse to have you tearing around turning your enemies into Swiss cheese, it has you battling an alien race called the Killmat, who have invaded the lost city of Karnak and are threatening to take over the world. You must travel around the ancient ruins of Egypt with the help of the spirit of Pharaoh Ramses, collecting six artifacts which allow you to enter the final levels of the game. These artifacts and the abilities they give you are loosely based on the gods of Egyptian mythology and grant your character special abilities such as being able to jump large distances, gaining resistance to lava damage and the ability to glide. A really good feature about Exhumed is as you gain these new abilities, you can go back to previous areas and use them to reach previously inaccessible places. This allows you to collect new items, weapons and create new paths through familiar levels. As a byproduct of this, you get to go back to early levels that you might have struggled with and completely trounce them with your upgraded arsenal and artifact enhanced superhuman abilities. Whilst this doesn't sound too revolutionary now, back in 1996 when I first played this as a child, it blew my tiny mind. Another thing it soon does fairly well is the combat, and seeing as this is a first person shooter, that's a pretty integral part to the game there. Things do start fairly slowly, and you're only equipped with a machete and a revolver, and that's it for the first couple of levels. Then this happens, things start to get a bit interesting. So although you start up with fairly standard military weapons, such as the M60, you gradually work your way through to the more mythologically themed weaponry, such as the Cobra Staff, the Ammon Mines, and the Ring of Ra. The weapons in this game feel very meaty and powerful, and have a nice variety rather than your standard pistol, shotgun, assault rifle. Special shout out to the Ring of Ra, which fills the screen with bouncing fireballs and works really well in enclosed spaces filled with enemies. Speaking of this, when enemies die they tend to explode in showers of gore, which can be very satisfying, especially if the enemy in question has been giving you a bit of grief. So the combat is fairly pacey, with a quick movement speed and ability to strafe, which was sorely missing from the PC version, countered by enemies that have some solid attacks and abilities that allow them to either close you down from mauling or harass you from a distance. This means although the player is more than capable of defeating anything that gets in its path, your adversaries are also able to punish your mistakes. Simply put, the game is challenging without being so hard that it hampers your enjoyment. Where things do fall down a bit is that some of the areas tend to be more enclosed and restrictive on movement, so these encounters can just become a straight slugfest to see who has the most health. Another thing that's a slight detriment is the lack of types of enemies. 
Whilst there are enough enemy variations to keep the combat interesting, I can't help but think that it wouldn't have hurt to have a few more creatures in there with different abilities to spice things up a bit. And the panther women that teleport out after you hit them, only to teleport in randomly at any point in the level are a right pain in the backside. However, these are minor complaints to an otherwise pretty good combat system. So the movement speed is brisk and your character charges around, jumping huge distances and adding a nice feeling of speed and pace to the game. The only issue here is that the jumping controls can feel a bit floaty and loose. This becomes apparent as some of the platform sections demand precision accuracy, sometimes with time constraints. Also, the noises the player makes when jumping makes it sound like he's vomiting. As mentioned earlier, the graphics on the slave driver engine still hold up fairly well, although there are some obvious design choices here used to keep the game performing well on the limited PS1 hardware. There are some obviously drawn skyboxes and the occasional jagged edges, especially when entering and exiting water. However, as a trade-off, you do get the fully 3D, fairly intricate and detailed environments. The game performs fairly well for the most part, although I did find some instances of slowdown when things got a bit too hectic, but these were few and far between. One slight complaint in regard to the graphics is that all the antagonists are 2D sprites. This can look a bit jarring against the 3D environments, but the sprite work and animation is well done, and it's not a deal breaker for me. Special mention has to go to the music in this game. It reminds me of the best parts of Raiders of the Lost Ark, or the late 90s reboot of The Mummy. It's a mix of swashbuckling, rousing, Egyptian themed tunes that I've definitely not been humming at work and irritating my colleagues with. It really adds to the overall atmosphere and mood of the game, and complements the action very well. So, if you've been paying attention, you'll know that I really enjoy playing this game again. It's a bit slow to start, but once it gets going, it's a lot of fun. It has some great level design, fantastic combat, and an interesting setting. Does it hold up as a Lost Classic? Yeah, I think it does. Right, I think I'm going to go play some more. Harry Palmer here. Just wanting to say thanks very much for watching this episode of Are You Game? You can support my fledgling channel by either liking, subscribing, or watching some more videos. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.